What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Courtside with Camden. I'm here with the new Penn State men's basketball coach, Micah Shrewsbury. How are you doing tonight, coach? I'm doing great. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to be on Courtside with Camden. Yeah, we are happy to have you here. So you have been on campus for about one or two months now. Tell us about how that transition has gone for you. It's been really good. Um, I'm enjoying every part of this, enjoying the people here, enjoying the town as much as I can uh, when I'm not working and when I'm not constantly going from one thing to the next. So I'm looking forward to getting the full experience uh, once everybody's on campus here in the fall, once the students are here, once more events start up, getting to a football game, mm -hmm. getting to other things on campus. Like I'm looking forward to every part of it, but right now it's been going great. Are you a big football fan? I am a huge college football fan. Yes, great. I'm a huge college football fan. I uh, I watch the NFL, but not very much sporadically. But I'll watch like random college football games when it's on. I know uh, Coach Stevens and I used to always say when we retire, we're just going to get an RV and just travel from city to city and go to like the best football games that weekend. Oh so, wow. That's we're gonna get, awesome. We're going to do the full experience. So I know for me, when I first got to Penn State, the community was like a family immediately to me. Everyone welcomed me with open arms, and I'm sure it's been the same for you. So how important has that been for you, you know, accepting that family atmosphere and then also trying to create it in the staff that you are assembling? It's, uh, it's been big for me, and I talk about family a lot, even, even uh, all of our recruits, but all the people that I interviewed for a job here, family was big. No matter what stage they're in, I wanted them to know that my family's going to be around. Their family's welcome. We want to be a part of this community. We want our kids a part of this community. We want our players a part of this community. And this whole Penn State family, it's something that's pretty cool. For a big school to have like the feel of like a smaller place and how close-knit mm -hmm. kind of everything is, like that's exciting for me. That's what I want kind of my family to be around. That's what I want my staff you know, to be around and um, we're welcoming everybody you know come to the BJC like check out practice come to yeah. games like we want you all to be a part of it because you know everybody's a part of this Penn State family. I love that and speaking of family tell us about you know your family and who you're going to be bringing with you to State College. Uh, so my wife Molly uh, we were, we've been married since 03 so she's been a part love of it. like this entire journey of mine uh, through coaching so She's been great. She's been a rock star. We went to high school together. We went to junior and senior prom oh together. Oh my gosh, that is yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so she's got some, you know, some stories um, that I'm sure the Penn State people. We're gonna have to bring hear. her on courtside. <laughs> we gotta hear these. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know if those stories are allowed to be told, but um, but she's awesome. You know, she's been a part of this. I, I have a son, Braden, who's 16, who's a hooper, who's a uh, big time shooter. So. You know, we need to get him on campus, and the, the head coach probably needs to start recruiting him. Okay. Uh, the head coach of Penn State. <laughs> uh, I have another son, Nick, who is 12, or he's 13, seventh grader. Caitlin is my daughter. She is 12. She's the future TikTok star. Um, Love it. And Girl, then, my own heart. <laughs> yeah. And then Gracie is eight, and she is, like, everybody's, you know, everybody loves Gracie. Like, everywhere we go, like, she's, like, the favorite. Shrewsbury household. So oh my gosh. I, I sneak that in every once in a while. She'll lean over to me and whisper in my ear, like, Dad, I know you're, I, I know that I'm your favorite. You don't have to tell the others. <laughs> we love the energy. I, I love, you know, I'm a huge Kobe fan, and I remember, um, you know, with GJ and Gigi and all his daughters, the hashtag girl dad was trending on Twitter. Does that mean anything to you? Does it resonate with you? I know you have two daughters, obviously. So is that something that's really important to you? It is. It is. And, you know, I got a chance for like my sons to really experience being around college basketball. So they were a part of our runs when we were at Butler. Like I have pictures of those guys, you know, watching those teams and they grew up idolizing those teams that went to the national championship game at Butler. Uh, but then they got a chance to be around the guys in the NBA. So the experiences that they've seen, what they've seen, high-level basketball, high-level players, like they've they've had it and they've been yeah. a part of that. And like it's important for me for my daughters to have that same experience and whatever they want to do, like whatever interests they have. And that's what 
kind of colleges. That's what the college campus is, being able for them to see excellence in a lot of different areas mm. and have people for them to look up to and, and role models. And you know, They have their mom, but you know, for them to see everybody and yeah. for them to see your team, you and your teammates, for them to see, you know, maybe it's women's soccer or whatever sport it may be, but also, you know, theater or art or dance or just normal students that are here at Penn State trying to just be great in their field. Yeah, for sure. So for, you know, the young players that are watching, I know you, you know, we were at Purdue the last few years and before that you were working with Brad Stevens at the Celtics and got your hands on a bunch of amazing players, um, Jason Tatum, Isaiah Thomas, you know, throughout your coaching career. What attributes did those players have that you would um, almost credit their success to and are intangible things that young players and recruits should strive to have? I think the biggest thing with those guys is hard work. And they have started since they were young. People talk about yeah. how skilled Jason Tatum is, but Jason Tatum's been doing individual workouts since he was a young kid. Yeah. And like they have put in hours upon hours upon hours of hard work. And they realize now they're at that level where, you know, part of it is their job, but it's built into them in terms of working hard and how the what it takes. Because everybody in the NBA is good. You know, it's the best 450 players in the world. And like if you don't work as hard as the next guy, you're not gonna make it. I think that's the biggest thing. The work, the development is huge. No, that's real for sure. I think you have to love the game and love the process of becoming great just as much as you love being great. Um, as far as recruiting goes, I know you just hired um, Brian Snow as your director of recruiting. And with this new transfer portal and you know how many kids are in that, how does that mindset along with the new transfer portal and a fold is how has that affected your recruiting when you know filling up this roster for this coming season it's you know it's been a difficult process and the transfer portal is a big part of that right now um, you know we're trying not to spread ourselves too thin but you have to really dig into everything yeah. and because it happens so quick and people are making quick decisions you don't get the same opportunity that you would a normal recruitment to yeah get to know the kids, get to know the families, learn everything around them, learn everything about them. So the process is being sped up. Um, now you can also change your team in a short amount of time in a good or bad way. Yep, you know, we did that. Coach. So you, know, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, so it allows me as a new coach to come in and have a completely different looking team. When you're recruiting those players, so I can imagine one of the hardest parts about coaching, I mean obviously I'm not a coach, I wouldn't actually know, but is picking the, the type of man or woman that you want in your roster, um, like culturally. And I think, you know, my Penn State women's basketball team, we have our, our culture statement, which is PRIDE, it's an acronym that stands for passion, respect, investment, discipline, and excellence. And that's kind of the foundation of our culture and what we want to be as a program. Do you have something similar that you're going to implement to your guys, whether it's a word, a phrase, a mantra, whatever it might be, to have them all live by this, you know, goal? Yeah, we talk um, a lot about our Penn State values. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I haven't been around our guys in terms of meetings and doing everything as much, so they haven't been hit with it as much as they will okay. once the fall <laughs> So hits. be ready, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, our values, and these are things that, are going to help you down the line. It's not just about you know being a Penn State basketball player today. It's about down the line what happens when mm -hmm. you leave here. It's about you know being a better father, being a better husband, being a better boyfriend, whatever it may be, a better employee. Like these are things that are going to help you you know further along when yeah. your career is finally over. They also may help you you know in your next career, whatever it may be, whether it's basketball or out of basketball. So. When I talk about the Penn State values, I, I talk about unity, passion, servanthood, thankfulness, humility, and accountability. And all of the decisions that I'm making, all the decisions that our staff is making are gonna be built around those values. And we wanna kinda instill those values into yeah. our group and into our guys. And that's what we want the fans to see when they watch a Penn State team play. Yeah, and I'd imagine that those values are part of this, but. It's been a while since Penn State men's basketball has been in the tournament. What are your, you know, blueprint or plans, whatever you want to call it, for getting your guys back there? I think for us, you, you know, we have to be a dynamic defensive team. 
Okay. Yeah, um, Penn State basketball, you know, staying true. It, it has to be um, <laughs> what we do. To be good in this league, in this conference, you have to be a really good defensive team. If you go through numbers, and you know, I look at numbers a lot just mm-hmm. because of the NBA ties and analytics, and Brad Stevens was big on that. Like, I look at it a lot. Like, the top defensive teams in our conference last year all made the NCAA tournament. Yep. And you kind of fall, you know, unless you're a super dynamic offensive team like a Gonzaga, you're usually one of the top defensive teams in your league. So, you know, Baylor was right at the top of their league. Michigan won our league. They were one of the top defensive teams and, and on down the line. So, like, that has to be our calling card. Uh, like, if we don't recruit at the same level of a Michigan State, that's okay. Uh, but we'll develop our guys to get to that level. Yeah, and now we're on an even, even playing field when it's time to step on the court. For sure. So, you, you mentioned earlier your time in the NBA with the Celtics. I have to ask, what is a funny one of your funniest stories um, reflecting on the, that time spent there that, that you can share with us? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I have a lot of pretty funny stories. I, I don't know which one would be best uh, to talk about. I, I guess you know the one you know I, I, I tell this story about uh, Rajon Rondo and I like when he first or when I first got to the league. He had, you know, he'd won a championship. He's been an all-star. There's a lot of accolades that he had. So he was injured when I got there. And I used to sit right next to him on the bench. Mm-hmm. And he would talk nonstop. He'd call out plays of the other team nonstop. You know, he, he had constant chatter the whole time. Love it. And I'm just sitting next to him, learning and soaking in every bit of it. And it was a preseason game or early in the regular season. And he... The point guard on the other team called out a play, and Rondo looks at me, and he was like, hey, when I get back, when the point guard calls a play, I'm going to say what it is to you. He goes, you need to tell me what that play is, or I'm going to F you up. Yeah, film 101. (laughs) Yeah, and and I had heard stories about Rondo, uh, about some things with, you know, he and coaches and everything yeah. else. So I, was, I wasn't I was 100% sure, like, if he was serious or not. Yeah. But I wasn't going to take that chance. So I learned everybody's plays, everybody's calls. And it started to get more challenging as coaches leave and, mm-hmm. and come in and out. But uh, that was a big thing that I moved to do yeah. uh, because of, you know, following a guy like him and his yeah. advice. No, I literally, I mean, definitely some advice. I love that, that concept of, Coaches coaching players, players helping out coaches, you know, just surrounding yourself with people on the same mission as you. And when you have a group of people who are united in that same goal, that's when the magic happens. So um, we are going to play a quick round of this or that. Are you ready for it, Coach? I I hope I'm ready. It's going to be rapid fire. (laughs) Let's see what we can do. Here we go. All right. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Beach or pool? Beach. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Good, good choice. I would have been concerned if you picked DC. Chocolate or vanilla. DC? DC's like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, all this. And then Marvel's like the Avengers, which is like Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Black Panther. Man, I do like Black Panther, but DC is like older, like my era. So are you switching to DC? I mean, you said Superman and Batman. That oh was like what God. I grew on. I grew up in the... I was born in the 70s. Do you... <laughs> Do you watch the <laughs> Avengers movies? Have you seen that? No. Oh my gosh, you need to add that. I mean, I know you're a busy man, okay. but when things calm down, you gotta watch that in chronological order. Right, so, so I'm, I'm both. Is okay. That, is that an answer? I'll accept it, just because you haven't had the, the, the time to okay. watch Marvel. Right. I think you'll change your mind. All right, but I'm both. Here we Next. go. Vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Chick Fil A or Chipotle? Chick Fil A. Good answer. Rihanna or Beyonce? Beyonce. Beyonce, all right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. He's torn between Marvel and DC, but I promise he'll pick Marvel after he watches the Avengers. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Coach. Make sure to check out Penn State men's basketball this season and tune in for the next episode. We are. Penn State.